All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, Biology Exploration 1.10 Kingdoms of Life Prokarya. Okay, guys, in order to understand the next three videos, you need to understand that life is categorized into six big groups. So if we find a living thing, we can place it into one of these six groups, and we call those kingdoms. And we can even take those kingdoms and put them into two major groups called domains. So let's break it down. All right, there are two domains, prokarya and eukarya, and it's based on cell type. Prokarya are prokaryotes, and eukarya are eukaryotes. Now, there are two kingdoms within the prokarya domain. Those are bacteria, or eubacteria, and the archaeans. Within eukarya, there are four kingdoms, the protist, the plants, the animals, and the fungi, or fungi. Let's take a look at domain prokarya. That's what we're starting on today. So let's look at kingdom bacteria and what makes them their own special group. First off, they are all prokaryotes. That is, their cells lack a nuclei, and they're quite simple organisms, and they're very, very small. And they're all unicellular, meaning they're made up of one cell. Now, here's an example. Here's some purple bacteria. It looks like they're living in big colonies, but each one of those is actually an individual. They're not reliant on the others around it, making them unicellular. All right, now how do the bacteria obtain energy? Well, they do it in three different ways, depending on the species. Some are pho photosynthetic, that is, they use the sun. Some are chemosynthetic, that is, they digest chemicals, essentially. And others just absorb food across their cell membranes. Here's an example of a photosynthetic bacteria, cyanobacteria, which is just a large group of bacteria. And it looks like they're multicellular organisms, but really those are colonial strands. And the cyanobacteria produce most of the oxygen on planet Earth. Some special attributes, and there could be thousands of these. Uh, a lot of members of the kingdom bacteria are decomposers. That is, they break down dead material and turn it into just kind of essential nutrients. They enhance the soil. For example, uh, most of the crops that we grow could not exist if it were not for the bacteria living in the soil. They can be beneficial to humans. We call those the good bacteria. They can be diseases. We call those the bad bacteria. And uh, as I mentioned before with the cyanobacteria, they create most of the oxygen we breathe. Here's an example of some of the good bacteria, also known as probiotics these days. This is Lactobacillus acidophilus. This is what you're going to find in yogurt and certain uh, things like kefir. Uh, there's also, we use good bacteria for production in cheeses and, and other fermented foods as well. Now, there are some bad ones too. Salmonella, food poisoning, which we see here. Heliobacter, which causes things like stomach ulcers. And a lot of STDs like gonorrhea are also uh, members of the kingdom bacteria. Here's an, a unique group, and I put these in here because in Glacier National Park you can find fossils of these. Some of the oldest living organisms on the planet are stromatolites. These are actually bacterial colonies, and they produce a lot of oxygen as well. All right, let's take a look at the prokarya um, archaeids. All right, so still in domain prokarya, kingdom archaea here. These are prokaryotes, and they're all unicellular, and they obtain energy through photosynthesis and chemicals. So, so far they seem really, really similar to the bacteria, and that's because they are. But what makes these things unique is that they are extremophiles. So an extremophile is an organism that can live in extremely harsh conditions. For these guys, we can find them living in Arctic ice. We can live, find them in thermal pools like you would find in Yellowstone National Park, in extremely salty waters, in the digestive tract of animals like termites. And what really makes them different than bacteria is that they have very unique cell walls that kind of protect them in these extreme environments. If you're wondering about the name Archean, it means ancient. And that's because we think that if you would go back to ancient Earth when it looked like it was really terrible conditions for life, the type of life we would find there would be Archeans. Here's just some uh, pictures to give you an idea of what the Archeans look like from the air. This is a thermopool, and you can see all that orange and red coloration. Those are actually extremophilic um, Archeans living in there in, in colonies. Here's a deep sea hydrothermal vent where you're going to find the most extreme temperatures for living things on Earth. Um, and this Pyrococcus furiosus you see in this little inserted image here, that's the type of organism you're going to find there in temperatures well exceeding boiling water. 
We also find Archaeans living in extremely salty environments like you see here. Uh, Archaeans living in that area, we call those halophiles, which means salt-loving organisms. All right, join us next for 111 Kingdoms of Life, Protestant Plants.